As my colleagues have said, we have um, this horrible situation in this country, parents, teachers having to see children being killed every day by, by gun violence. The country is awash in illegal firearms, we've heard that. We have accidental shootings by and of children. We have increasing suicide rates. And of course, uh, mass shootings continue across our nation. And public poll after public poll tells us the same thing. People want us in Congress to do something, to take action. More than half of Americans consistently support stricter gun laws. Listening to some of my colleagues, you'd think that we were on a different planet. Thank you, Director, for being here. I know it's been a, it's been a long day. Um, thank you for your time. So as I sit here, um, I'm really struck by what I feel we should be talking about here is that we have a fairly simple mandate from the American people, which is to do all we can to stop gun violence. The majority is not even approaching or discussing new public protections or stricter gun laws. And the ATF doesn't have the resources to inspect firearms dealers as directed by Congress. Right now, over 2,000 firearms dealers have not undergone any inspection in over 10 years. There are laws already on the books to help us stem the tide of this violence, but they aren't being enforced because oftentimes Republicans won't give them the money to do so. Now, Director, I appreciate very much that you're here today. I'd like to talk a little bit more specifically about the work that ATF does. You got a big job. How does your agency carry out its mission with just over 5,000 employees? It's very difficult. It's shockingly low, given uh, it's, but the your way charge. We, yeah, the, look, the way we do it is we have an incredible workforce. I mean, the, the people that, the career people, I'm the only political appointee at ATF. Not a single Schedule C person, just me. The people who are the career people get the credit here. These are agents, these are investigators, lab technicians, uh, uh, analysts, staff. They do incredible, dangerous work every day. Uh, and the, the only way to get make any progress on this is partnership, with our state and local partners, which we're better than anybody else with respect to others at. And number two, uh, being smart about how we use the intelligence that we provide to identify the worst of the worst, to make sure that we are actually taking steps to do two things. Number one, identify the worst of the worst, the trigger pullers and the shooters, and get them out of the community, put them where they belong, incarcerated, bluntly, and also, at the same time, to do something to enforce the existing laws to cut off the supply of guns to those same people. It is far too easy for killers, felons, gang members, rapists, domestic violence people to get firearms, even though the law and everybody agrees they shouldn't have them. So you have to do both of those two things. It's a two-part strategy. And there are people who only want me to do one, and there are other people who only want me to do the other one. And the fact of the matter is, you're not gonna make progress unless you have a reasonable approach on both. So to follow up on that, um, how do you go about making those decisions about priorities? And are there functions that you unfortunately have to deprioritize due to the resource constraints that you have? And, and what are those? Uh, so you, 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 you make the fun decisions based on data, as best the data that you can find in real time. It's not always perfect. Um, and there are, bluntly, there are areas of this country where I wish that we would have more agents. The New York, New York City, um, is an example. So in New York City, New York City Police Department is 36,000 strong. I have about 30 people in New York City. Uh, it, is, it is absolutely, and we punch way above our weight, and that, there, there, that's the case everywhere. So we are making decisions about where the crime threat is. When I make an investment on the southwest border, as we, as we have, not I, we have, at ATF, that means at ATF that we can't start up a whole new division. That means we're pulling agents from some other place that we really care about. Uh, so we are constantly struggling to balance resources in the best way we can to face a lot of threats. And Director, um, you know, I, my, I'm just about out of time, but I think it's clear that 
without substantial funding, we are not going to improve our statistics on gun violence, and we're not going to improve our public safety outcomes. We should be putting the money to work to help protect our kids. I say that as a member of Congress. I also say that as a former teacher and I'm a parent of two teenagers. We have to do something about this and not just talk about it. Thank you.